Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Hyun Ju Ryu from Gyeong University at Laboratory of Electronic and Advanced Devices. The topic of my research is to fabricate a vertical generator FT with excellent operability and bias stability at less than 150 nanometer using ALD IDGU active and hafnium oxide gate insulator. The presentation will be conducted in the following order, and first in the introduction, I will explain the technology, trend, and motivation of my research. In order to manufacture high-density and high-performance chip in silicon applications, the NAND flash memory adopted a stepped-up structure to increase the degree of integration, while DRAM adopted EUV to form small and fine patterns. Despite all this, the current semiconductor technology faces a technical barrier in the process of manufacturing chips with overwhelming performance beyond the current level. Accordingly, the companies are leading the industry through platform-based technological innovation by changing the structure and materials in the existing system. Therefore, multi-gate, multi-channel devices such as trench, gate all-around, nanosheet, fin, and vertical structures are being studied to reduce the footprint of the device while improving the gate controllability for the channels, which avoids short-channel effects caused by the device miniaturization. One of these short-channel effects stems from the inherent crystallographic properties of polysilicon. As the device continues to scale down, the green boundaries of polysilicon cause performance degradations of transistors such as reduced operating currents and uniformity, and increased leakage components. In order to solve this problem, material innovation is indispensable, and thus, research on an alternatives for polysilicon is also actively underway. Representative alternatives are oxide semiconductor with multi-element ion compositions such as IgGO, IgTO, and zinc oxynitride. Oxide semiconductors are considered as a material capable of replacing polysilicon in an optimal composition because the operating characteristic of the device can be controlled according to the compositions of the constituent transition metals. Therefore, in this work, we introduced a new platform such as vertical structure and ALD IgTO. Speaking from the conclusion, we succeeded in fabricating a vertical channel thin film transistors operating at a channel length of 130 nanometer, and reported on the feasibility of ALD IgTO in silicon application. Next, in the experimental details, I will explain the key process and process optimization procedures of vertical TFTs. The most important step in forming a vertical structure is dry etching of the drain and spacer. First, a spacer and a drain electrode are sequentially deposited on the pre-pattern source, and two-step etching process is performed with one pure mask. At this time, since the channel length is determined by the profile and thickness of the spacer sidewall, we have a structural advantage of better accessibility than expensive high-resolution lithography equipment. However, there is pure tapering issue which inevitably occur during the wet development process leading to transferring of profile to the sublayers during the edge process. As shown in the same image on the right, we found the profile of the PR is transferred to the drain electrode after etching process. Therefore, a caref carefully controlled etching technique is required to avoid these perennial problems as much as possible. In order to realize the geometry of the design devices, the spacer sidewall must be close to vertical and the drain electrode on the sidewall must not be vanished. In order to separate the source and drain in the vertical directions, an insulating spacer should be chosen. In this study, ALD alumina and solution processed silicon oxide were compared to evaluate the process compatibility. The dry etching conditions are shown in the table on the right. First, ALD alumina was evaluated for a thin film of 40 nanometer. As a result, near vertical side wall was obtained, but due to the slow etch time, the tapered pier profile was transferred to the I2 electrode as well and resulted in the exposure of the upper part of the spacer which increased the channel length of 9.6 times. On the other hand, in the case of solution processed silicon oxide, despite the relatively thick film of 120 nanometer, the intact drain electrode on the spacer side was confirmed with a profile close to vertical. Accordingly, we selected a solution processed silicon oxide as the spacer material and formed a vertical structure through our own customized two-step etching process. Next, I will explain the silicon oxide spacer formation process. Silicon oxide is spin coated and sequentially heat treated at 150 degrees for an hour on a hot plate and 6 hours at 500 
degrees in an oxygen atmosphere at furnace. The FM analysis showed a smooth surface with a root mean scale roughness value of 0.45 nanometer, and the MIA measurements showed a good insulating properties. As a result, it was verified that the solution processed silicon oxide is suitable for electrically separating the source and drain in vertical TFTs. The next important step is the IDGO active patterning process. We deposited IDGO using thermal ALD and successfully deposited 5 nanometer thick alumina protection layer. In this process, the protection layer is essential because it minimizes the process damage of IDGO during the active patterning process. In this way, we have carefully designed the process sequence. Next, we studied the process compatibility of material combinations of silicon oxide and IgGO. In the proposed structure, since the spacer and active contact directly at the interface, a back channel region is formed. Therefore, it is necessary to discuss the interaction between silicon oxide and IgGO. We measure the electric conductivity of IgGO with in situ four point proof method to find the influence of the back channel material. IgGO deposited on thermal oxide and solution process silicon oxide were prepared as reference and control samples, respectively. The measurement principle is explained as follows. When the temperature increased from 50 to 250 degrees, the sheet resistance of IgGO film is obtained, and the electrical conductivity is extracted from the reciprocal value of the resistivity. There are two points to note in the measurement results. One is that initial electrical conductivity value of the control sample is higher than the reference sample due to the hydrogen dot IgGO from the residual solvent residue. Second, as the temperature increased above 60 degrees, the doping effects of IgGO disappeared so that there is no difference in conductivity and activation energy between two. From these two results, it is suggested that 150 degree thermal ALD alumina process is very suitable for VTFT in terms of not only minimizing the active etching damage of the IgGO, but also removing the doping effects. Finally, we verify the process compatibility of the material combinations of silicon oxide and IgGO. The last important step is the gate stack formation process. To improve the yield of vertical transistor, it is necessary to deposit uniform thin film depositions across the vertical structure. Thus, not only active and protection layer, but also gate insulator and gates were deposited using ALD. The image presented below are top view, FIB stem, and TM image of the vertical TFTs fabric fabricated by the process optimization process, respectively. The fabricated device exhibited Excellent step coverage through all ALD based deposition with a sidewall profile of 70 degrees. And also, on TM results, a clean interface between layers without elementary diffusion was demonstrated. Finally, 130 nanometer scale IgGO VTFTs were successfully fabricated. Next, in the research and discussion section, I will report the electrical performance of the VTFTs. First, we measure the output curve of the nanoscale transistor. The drain voltage was applied from 0 to 4 volt with the gate voltage step of 1 volt. As a result, the current saturation phenomenon was found in the high drain voltage region without current crowding and the low voltage region. In summary, even in the channel length of 130 nanometer, good TFT operation was checked. Next, we measure transfer curve at the trend drain voltage of 1 at 0 0.1 volt and gate strip range of 10 volt. Although the initial characteristic of the device showed a high gate leakage and drain off current level, after thermal annealing for an hour in an oxygen atmosphere at 150 degrees, the gate leakage component and upstate drain current were significantly reduced. It can be explained by the fact that the leakage component flowing across the gate stack is remedied by the heat treatment. But still, there is a problem that the drain of state current values are still high. To examine the cause of high off-current phenomenon, the transfer curve was measured from drain voltage of 0.01 to 1 volt. As a result, 
of current increased regardless of the applied voltage, which may be explained by the drainage barrier lowering, which verify the short channel effects of the IgG on TFTs. While the analysis of short channel effect in IgG on is further in-depth discussion as of future works. Next, the reliability of BTFT was measured by MBS and PBS test by applying a bias stress for a 10,000 seconds in a 1 megavolt per centimeter magnitude of electric field. After applying the bias stress, the device showed a robust stability without significant change in on current and threshold voltage. However, we have to focus on the abnormal degradation behavior such as an increase in the off current under the PBS. The scenario for the increase in off-current under PBS can be explained as follows. In terms of defect nature and thermodynamics, oxygen vacancy prefers to have an oxygen state of 2+. At this time, residual hydrogen atoms supplied from the solution process spacer can move freely to IG due to, to its small size. Accordingly, hydrogen is trapped in an oxygen vacancy of IgG under normal and negative bias stress conditions to form monovalent HO+. On the other hand, under PBS, hydrogen trapped in the oxygen vacancy escaped by the lattice relaxations arm formed HI-, which acts as a negatively charged carrier. In summary, the generation of HI- Additional carrier on the back channel may cause the off-current increase under PBS. As mentioned earlier, the fabricated device showed little change in an on-current and threshold voltage during the bias stress, representing the formation of an excellent interface between layer thanks to the introduction of ALD base, gauge stack, and protection layer. Thus, we verified the robust stability of BTFT using an ALD IGG in 130 nanometer channel length. Finally, in the conclusion, I will summarize the presentation and explain the future works. In this study, we've introduced a vertical structure and ALD IGG to fabricate a vertical channel TFT with nanometer scale channel length. As a result, we secure the operation characteristics, stability against bias, and even short channel effect in IgG. This study offers a great promise for system integrations of IgG for future silicon applications. Meanwhile, the paper on this study is scheduled to be published in the nanotechnology soon, and those who have interest can check out the DOI at the top right of the PPT slide. Currently, as of future works, to avoid the inevitable H impurity effects on the device performance, we searched for a new space to materials, and also to overcome the profile and line edge roughness arising from the inherent limitations of lithography, the eyeline stepper was considered to prov provide structure accuracy and high quality back channel for improving the performance of nanoscale IDG of VTFT. This is the end of my presentation, and thank you for your attention.